Welcome to question 6 of the 2015 Mathematical Methods Exam 1. In this video we will be looking at the solution and examination advice for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 6 it says let the random variable x be normally distributed with a mean of 2.5 and a standard deviation of 0.3. Z is then going to be the standard normal variable such that Z has a mean of zero and a variance and standard deviation of one. For part A, we're asked to find the value of B such that the probability that X is greater than 3.1 is equal to the probability Z is less than B. So to do this question, we're gonna start by drawing out two normal distributions, one above the other. So now that we've got those bell-shaped curves, we can say that this top one is going to be x, and we know it's normally distributed with a mean of 2.5 and a variance of 0.3 squared. So that means that this value here is 2.5. And for this second bell-shaped curve, this is going to be z, which we know to be normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation and variance of 1. And that would make this value here 0. So going back to our question, we want the probability that x is greater than 3.1. So using our standard deviation, this next one would be 2.8 and this would be 3.1. So the probability that x is greater than 3.1 is that region there. And we want a value of b so that the area under the curve that's less than b is equivalent to that region. So we'd need to go two standard deviations, which would be negative one and then negative two to get to this position and that area there would be equivalent. So therefore the value of b that we want is b equals negative two. So that is the answer to part a of this question. Now if you wanted to, there was a formula we could have used that said that the standardized z value is equal to the x value, take the mean divided by the standard deviation. So therefore for this question, the standardized z value would have been the x value of 3.1, subtract the mean value of 2.5, divided by the standard deviation of 0.3, which would have given 0.6 over 0.3, which equals 2. And then the trick here is you'd still need to consider the symmetry of the bell-shaped distributions to discover that b needed to be equal to negative 2 based on the way the question was asked. From the examiner's report, we can see that 50% of students got this correct and 50% didn't. And those students who drew a diagram of a normal curve with relevant areas shaded found this to be helpful in obtaining the mark. An answer of plus two was common, and that would have occurred if you had to use the formula but not considered the question asking for a value of b such that z less than b is equivalent. And the incorrect answer of 1.9 was also common, which came about as being two standard deviations below the mean of x, rather than considering the region on the standard normal z. This question required a conversion to the standard normal curve, which is quite a routine question relating to normal distributions. For part B, it says to use the fact that correct to two decimal places the probability that z is less than negative 1 equals 0.16 to find the probability that x is less than 2.8 given that x is greater than 2.5. And we want to write our answer correct to two decimal places. So for this question, we're going to start off again by drawing out two bell-shaped distributions. So again, the top one we're going to have x is normally distributed with a mean of 2.5 and a variance of 0.3 squared. And that the second one is z, which is normally distributed with a mean of zero and a standard deviation and variance of one. So for the x distribution, we know that the mean here is 2.5. And on our z distribution, this mean is zero. And we've got extra information that says that correct to two decimal places, the probability z is less than negative one, so one standard deviation in the negative direction. We know that the area under that part of the curve is equal to 0.16. And now this question asks for the probability that x is less than 2.8, given that x is greater than 2.5. So that's a conditional probability. And the probability that x is greater than 2.5 is all of this area here. And based on our knowledge of a normal curve, we know that that area there is 0 
Then we need to consider the probability that x is less than 2.8, but as it's a conditional probability, it needs to be the intersection of less than 2.8 and greater than 2.5. So 2.8 would be one standard deviation above. So it would be this area here would be less than 2.8, but greater than 2.5. So to evaluate this conditional probability, we need the probability of the intersection, which is x is being greater than 2.5, but less than 2.8, divided by the condition, which was the probability that x was greater than 2.5. So this is going to equal the probability that x is between 2.5 and 2.8 is equal to a half, subtract 0.16, and that's why we needed this piece of information down here because we know that the area in green that we shaded on our second distribution is actually going to be equal to this region up here. So this will be 0.5 minus 0.16, and then we're going to divide that by the probability that x is greater than 2.5, which is simply 0.5. And then this is going to equal 0.15 minus 0.16, which is 0.34. And then instead of dividing by a half, we can multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 2 over 1, which gives a probability of 0.68, correct to two decimal places. So that is the answer to part B of this question. From the examiner's report, we can see that 37% of students got full marks for that question, and that most students could state the relevant rule and obtain the correct denominator of a half but then failed to recognise that the probability that x is less than 2.8 given that x is greater than 2.5 was equal to this fraction here. Probabilities greater than 1, which students should know are impossible, were often seen, and that errors did occur in the handling of decimals and or fractions when simplification was undertaken.